All right, so for this last part, I am going to walk you through how I'm currently setting up my Tinderbox file to do a literature review. So I have a bunch of stuff here, and I'll go ahead and say in advance, like I said before, I'm only doing this in one take. And Tinderbox, for all of its great features, um, in my experience, can be a little buggy and unpredictable. Um, I'm willing to deal with those things because it really meets some of the needs I have in ways that no other software I've found does. But it's possible that I'm going to tell you, you know, this is what I do and then I'll try to do it and it won't work. Um, in fact, I'm expecting that to happen. So you'll see these little buckets. Here's one that says theories. Here's one that says methods. This is all, um, if I were to um, create a note and then create another note and drag the other note into that note, it creates a little bucket just like this. So all of this is is, a, is, a, is an empty note in this case called theories. And underneath it is this whole palette of notes that I've created around theories that I'm reading about in this specific example, theories about restorative environments. So for each one of my um, topics that I'm currently reviewing in the literature, I think that I will have, this is called an adornment, and an adornment uh, with the theme or the topic, and then theories, methods, instruments, arguments, findings, and gaps. And in each one of these buckets, I'll have notes and more buckets and all sorts of things that I'm playing with. Um, in addition to that, so here's another area, contemplation, that I'm playing with theories. I've got another one over here. I'm calling it technology parking lot because I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to call it yet. In addition to that, I have this little blue adornment that I'm calling home base. And right now, it basically has citations, people, and questions that are, um, that are drumming up for me, along with a little legend where I keep my prototypes. Um, prototypes are just um, different um, notes that have certain metadata or certain um, appearance distinctions that then you can um, you can sort on later. I can talk about that later. It's also pretty easy to look up what these specific things, adornments, agents, prototypes, and notes means in the the, um, the Tinderbox documentation. So for example, if I double click on the citations bucket, I can see all of the different um, things that I've read and made zettles about in this particular Tinderbox file. Um, so, for example, you'll see that each one of these has a, an arrow going to it and an arrow going away from it. And this one says 6, and this one says 1, this one says 5. What those numbers indicate is that I have other notes in Tinderbox that are connected to this particular citation. So, for the one that we were just looking at, um, when I was telling you about um, being away, uh, that is from this, and so you can see being away is listed right there. Um, and I also have five other notes um, that are associated with this particular citation, and I can click on one of those and go to a completely different area of my Tinder Tinderbox file that will show me where that is, and we're going to do that in just a second. But I also wanted to point out that I have this bottom thing I can click on, and that will show me the author. So, for example, this one um, so I'm, I'm creating um, a different palette, a different works, works, what would you call that, like a desktop really, with notes about the authors that I'm reading too so that I can remember who they are. Um, and uh, we'll jump over to that uh, right now by clicking on one of those authors, but I wanted to point out that this one has two because I have made two notes um, because, I, because both Stephen and Rachel Kaplan are important in my research, but for example, this one here, there's a whole bunch of authors and I just have Terry Hartig listed because he's the only one that I'm currently tracking with this. So let's click on Terry. This jumps me to a completely different area and if you remember in the blue home base I had one called people that if I double click on that that's where I would get to here. And I'm tracking the people that I'm reading. Here are the psychologists, architects, um, contemplatives, and technologists. And I try to 
develop their note. Let's click on Roger Ulrich so that their their picture is here, and um, and and anything that's not in italics is something that I've written to remind myself, and then I am putting some notes in italics uh, right now because there are just too many people and I, I'm not exactly sure who's going to totally ultimately be important to me and so I don't want to spend a whole lot of time creating biographies for everyone. And you'll notice too that these aren't zettles. These are just notes that don't belong in that that sort of long-term stuff just yet. These are just these are just sort of notes like a traditional note but it helps me to tie the citation to the author and the author to lots of other notes. Um, if I wanted to create a zettle about a particular person, um, then that would, um, I wouldn't have a lot of quoted material and that kind of stuff in it. So, you'll see here we have Roger Ulrich. He has two things coming to him. Carrie Hartig, four. Hank Stotts, two. Um, there's some stuff over here with um, technologists and architects. If I click on this two, um, it, one is a citation that would take me back to where we came, and the other is a zettel um, called Importance of Safety. I bet you. So Hartig, I have only um, noted him in his citations, and Ulrich, I think, is, is he's about Importance of Safety as well. So let's just show you why these two are under Importance of Safety. This is going to jump us probably to the theories bucket that we were looking at before. And it did. And the way I can tell is because here we have some breadcrumbing and this is theories. So this is my theories pane. And just to um, orient us, I'm going to go back to the, to the main thing and show you how I would get to that. So here's my restorative environments. As I said, I just double click on theories. I get to the theories pane. So this is, a, a, is sort of a diagram I'm creating. Um, of how I'm understanding what I'm reading about the theoretical frameworks underneath the bucket of restorative environments. So particularly, I'm noticing that every framework that I've read about so far has um, safety as an important element. If I were to look at the note I have about this, um, I have uh, tagged Hank Stotts and Roger Ulrich, because I think both of them have specifically called out safety. And I haven't tagged Kevin Lynch yet because I haven't done his um, his people card, his people note. But once I do, he would be tagged as well. Um, and here's a question, just like I, um, I had in the last one about Buddhism and aversion. Here's a question I have um, about safety, which is around mobile devices. Do they actually in some ways make us feel more safe because we have a way to connect to somebody if we get in trouble when we're out in the woods or something like that because all these people are mostly writing about experiences in nature. So that's um, that's why you'll see the three here um, would take us back to those people cards or would take us to um, the citation which is where I first learned of this importance of safety. But what I wanted to show you is how I'm treating these two major theoretical frameworks because I think this is actually the most exciting way that I'm using um, Zettelkasten and Kinderbox. And I'm going to do that in the next video so this is nicely truncated and not just a huge long video.